are going to talk about some electrolyte replacements today. Let me get rid of this real quick. Okay, so, um, and I take pleasure in having fun little uh, pictures throughout. So, there's that. 10 clinical minutes electrolyte replacement. Quick disclaimer, um, this is a cut and dry, very basic approach to electrolyte replacement. Um, there are many special conditions and medications that make electrolyte replacement a lot more complicated and a lot more nuanced. Um, so again, be careful with specific patients. This is meant to be just kind of a brief educational uh, first pass. So overall goal of electrolyte replacement is to first rapidly restore the plasma level to safe level. We know that various electrolytes um, can cause various heart arrhythmias and problems um, if the plasma level itself isn't correct. So we want to rapidly restore that for safety. Starting off with potassium. Um, in general, the dose per deficit that you need for potassium is 10 mL equivalents per 0.1 uh, concentration in your serum uh, potassium that's off. So I have a little table to the side. It technically gets a little more complicated if you're below 3.0 in your potassium. You need a little bit more. And basically that's just getting into the fact that your total body deficit is, um, is pretty low at that point. So you need a little bit more. Um, but in general, it's a safe assumption to do the 10 mL equivalents per 0.1 and then go from there and monitor the patient. For some oral dosing, um, you have two options. You can do a tablet or you can do some liquid. Both of these are not great. Um, the potassium tablet is pretty notorious among patients because it's monstrous. They call it the horse pill. Um, so if your patient has any sort of trouble swallowing, any sort of, um, you know, oral pain, anything like that, it's not the greatest option. Um, there is a liquid option, but it, a lot of patients say that it burns as it goes down. So again, not the best option, but it's definitely an option. For IV dosing, um, you really can't go much faster than 10 mL equivalents an hour. We typically use uh, potassium chloride. Um, the reason for that, if you don't know, is that um, potassium is actually used as lethal injection. So if you inject too much too quickly, you will kill the patient. So please do not go much faster than that. Um, some little workarounds, if you have a central line, you can go a little bit faster um, because you also, um, the potassium will burn the veins as you put it in. So if it's in a larger vein, closer to the heart, you can go a little bit faster. Um, another little pro tip that I've learned in the ER is that if you need faster replacement and you don't have a central line, so like if the patient's going into arrhythmia, you can get a separate IV and infuse both of the IVs at 10 mL equivalents an hour or you can dilute a 40 mL equivalent bolus in one liter of saline and give it that way. So um, just through a single IV, no faster than 10. Um, again, you need to be careful in certain situations um, where the potassium might be a little more labile. Calcium, most important part about calcium is to correct it for the albumin. Um, the calcium is related to the albumin because it binds to it in different settings. Um, so I have a longer explanation on there. You can go back and read later, but long story short is you need to replace the, um, you need to correct the calcium. So for every one that the albumin is off, you change the calcium by 0.8, or you can type an MD calc and do it that way. It's a lot faster. It'll do it for you. So if you don't have the mind space to do that mental math, just use your resources. You have computers all over you in the hospital. You can use them. Also get it on your phone. It's great. So for oral dosing for calcium, we have calcium carbonate, otherwise known as Tums, the famous, or there's calcium citrate. So um, the dosing on this varies. Uh, you can, again, go on to UpToDate, go on to Google, uh, find some dosing recommendations. In general, you're going to do one and a half to two grams of calcium per day. But again, the actual amount of the medication that you're giving depends because those aren't pure calcium. So look it up. It's easy to look up. Um, IV dosing. So this is really if you have a patient that either can't take any oral um, medications or if they are going into heart arrhythmias um, and they have low calcium or they have potassium issues and the calcium might <laughs> help. Um, again, that's a little beyond the scope here. So you can give one to two grams of calcium gluconate um, over 10 minutes to hours, depending on the acuity of the situation. Um, again, also, if your patient is like in torsades and is actively coding, you can give one gram of calcium chloride over 10 minutes. Um, again, only if the patient is actively in a code. Um, calcium infused too quickly can also kill your patient. So be careful. Um, make sure you have your residents around you. Obviously, you won't be putting this in, but as a resident soon, you'll be putting in these orders. 
So have your senior resident um, check your, so your sources. Um, if you're in, a, in a, an emergency, you can give, um, give it quickly. Um, a little side note here, after you've done the heroic doctor thing and you've given them the calcium and you're like, hoo hoo, hurrah, um, make sure that you figure out the underlying cause because IV calcium only lasts a few hours. So even if you replace it and they're doing better and they're smiling at you, you need to figure out why it happened, otherwise it's just gonna happen again. And a little side note, calcium will majorly affect the bowel system and cause significant constipation. So especially, for example, we've got patients that are like on a, all sorts of Tums for acid reflux or for calcium replacement, and they will have many if difficulties going to the bathroom. Make sure they're aware of that and give them some Miralax on top of it. So what if you've replaced the potassium and the calcium, but things just aren't being fixed? You keep replacing it and things aren't moving. The answer is probably magnesium. Um, so if you have a low magnesium, the dosing is one gram per 0.1. So kind of similar to the, to the potassium. Um, there's a couple different options um, to replace it, but the reason why magnesium can affect the, the potassium so significantly is that it actually regulates the channel in the kidneys that excretes the potassium. So if you don't have magnesium, all that potassium you're giving them is just gonna go waste into the urine over and over again. So you gotta replace that, that magnesium. So there's a couple different options for oral dosing. Um, again, these have different amounts of um, elemental magnesium in them. So look it up on up to date, find how much you might need. There's also great MD calcs for calculating magnesium deficits. Um, but the IV dosing, which is mainly what you're gonna do in the hospital because um, magnesium can be kind of tricky to absorb through the gut, especially if someone's sick. So we normally do it IV. So you're gonna do um, one gram at a time per hour. Quick side note, at KU we have a pretty cool uh, option that you can give four grams and 50 mils, which will give your patient less fluid. So if you have a patient with heart failure or something else where you just don't wanna give them too much fluid, let's say they're hyponatremic, something like that, if you're giving more than two grams of magnesium, go ahead and do this smaller volume option to help spare your patient that extra fluid. Um, max rate for magnesium, similar to potassium. Um, if you give it too fast, you will kill your patient. So you can give it one gram an hour, or if it's in an emergency, like they're in torsage, they're in another arrhythmia, they're acutely unstable, you can give it over two to 15 minutes. But again, only if they're acutely unstable. Um, and a, a quick little pearl here, most magnesium is intracellular. So even if your serum magnesium is normal, if you're having issues replacing the potassium or the calcium, go ahead and give magnesium. Really cool tip here, you really can't OD on oral potassium. So if you aren't quite sure or your patient's kind of on the line, give them some oral potassium. It's not really gonna hurt them. It might give them some diarrhea, but it's not gonna significantly hurt them. So go ahead and give them magnesium. Moving on to phosphorus, long story short here is that uh, it's really, really complicated. <laughs> there are many different options. It's very complicated. It's really confusing. So just talk to your pharmacist. They're great. This is a cute little plug for um, our colleagues in the pharmacy world. They're super helpful. But big takeaway here is that hypophosphatemia will generally resolve if you treat the underlying cause. So figure out what's going on. Be the awesome doctor that you are. Diagnose what it is. Uh, address what's going on. And the, phos the phosphorus will generally correct itself. Now, a quick word about sodium here. That's the most common electrolyte that we all think of early on in med school, but abnormal plasma sodium, although we may think, hey, they're not getting enough sodium, do I need to replace it? Do I need to help get it out? What's going on? It's actually an abnormal water balance. Um, the body is really good about um, handling sodium. So they typically will have a, it's not the total body sodium that you're concerned about, it's the water balance. So it could be issues with ADH, um, it could be other issues. So this is another topic for its own time, but um, just to note, abnormal plasma sodium is really abnormal water. So in summary, I made a cute little table here. Um, you can feel free to go back to, um, this will be on the YouTube channel as normal. You can go back and pause it, uh, take screenshots, do whatever you want. Um, just for quick references, um, when you're on rounds and your attending asks you, oh, they're, they're hypokalemic, what do you want to replace them with? You can say, I know the dorsing, I know the formula, and look like a star on rounds. So if you know your electrolytes, you too can be Batman and save the world again. It'll be off the chain. That is all I got. So 
Anyone have any awesome. questions or comments? Thank you, Brianna. That was a wonderful summary and highlight table on electrolytes that I'll probably be adding to my cheat sheet that I have um, for quick reference. So thank you for putting that together. Thanks for the lecture and look forward to seeing y'all tonight.